With this lesson, we are going to talk about um, parts of circles, central angles, and arcs. And by the end of this, you'll be able to calculate um, the central angles and the arcs of a circle and be able to um, be fluent in the vocabulary that we're using when we talk about circles. So let's make sure that we all um, know what we're talking about when we um, talk about a diameter. A diameter is a line that goes, a chord, um, that goes across, all the way across a circle. And so, um, and it passes through the center. So um, a diameter in this case um, would be segment HD um, or a segment BE. Um, and you can name those in any order, DH, EB, doesn't matter. Um, so a diameter passes through the center of the circle all the way from one side to the other with its endpoints on the circle. The radius is from the center of the circle um, to the outside of the circle with its, its endpoint on the circle. So we have several here. We have AD, for example, AE, um, AH, and so on. There are many more that you can continue going with. Um, but uh, it goes from the center to uh, a point on the circle outside. Okay, a central angle. An ang a central angle is an angle whose vertex is in the center of the circle. The center of the circle is A. So um, one example of a central angle would be angle CAD. Um, might be angle uh, BAC. Angle CAE. Let me show you some of these. Um, so we had a CAD. Here is CAD. We had um, BAC. There's a central angle. That's a central angle. Um, we had CAE. And CAE. Sorry, I had a interruption, but CAE is right here. So it's not always just one piece of the pie. Basically, it could be um, multiple, but basically you're just looking for um, that angle right there in the middle. Okay, a chord. A chord is a segment that goes across um, the circle with it and has its endpoints on the circle. So in this case, we might have chord um, FB. So chord FB is a segment. Uh, we could have chord DE, which is right here, chord DE. Um, we could have chord BC. And a diameter is a chord. It's just it's a special chord, and so we call it a diameter. Then we have a secant. A secant is a line um, that passes through a circle. And so we could have, for instance, um, we might have line BC is a secant. Um, or you could call it anything, JB, JC. Um, that's all that same line that passes through that circle. Um, we also have maybe FD, line FD right here, um, and, and all the different ways that you could possibly name it. So secants are lines that pass through circles. Tangents are lines that pass by circles and touch it at one inflection point. They, they stop at one point. Um, so for instance, this line right here, um, I, H, G, H, H, I, I, J, what, however you want to name that line, that is a tangent. It kind of um, kisses off of the circle at just that one little point. It kind of, it's hard to draw it on the computer, um, but that would be a tangent. IB would be a tangent also. Um, and it's so it, we're going to talk about those different things, and we may say two secants or two tangents. And so I just need to kind of recall uh, what those look like um, in your head when you, uh, when you know those vocabulary words. So then the other thing that we're going to have that's important is minor arc, major arc, and semicircle. So I'm not just talking about the segments that go across them, but actually the pieces of the circle um, that get cut um, by those lines. So a minor arc is an arc that is less than 180 degrees, and it is named with two letters. So we would have um, arc CD, and so it would be, you would do the two letters and you would put a little arc. So arc CD is right here. Um, we could have arc BC. Arc BC is less than 100. So 180 degrees is half a circle to give you an idea. Um, 180 degrees would be half a circle. We could have um, arc 
of CE, which is that whole piece. So we could have arc CE. So those are minor arcs. So if you are given a problem where you have two letters, it is asking for the short distance around. Then we've got a major arc. A major arc is more than 180 degrees and it is named with three letters because we need to distinguish, um, if we're looking at these, we need to distinguish between how do I know, if I say BD, how do I know whether I mean this arc here in yellow or this arc here in green? Both of those go from B to D around the circle, but how do I know which one I'm talking about? And so that's where we have this way of naming arcs with minor arcs have two letters and major arcs have three. And so if I wanted to name that green arc, then I might name it BHD. Um, I could name it um, BED. Okay, it's kind of what you want to think about is I start at B and I'm going to end at D and I'm going to go through E to get there. That's how you kind of think about naming it. And then a semicircle, a semicircle could be named with two or three because a semicircle is equal to 180 degrees. So I could name it HD or DH um, because it doesn't matter whether I go from um, on the top half of the circle or whether I go to the bottom half of the circle. I could also, if I wanted to be specific, I could call it DCH and that would tell me that I'm talking specifically about the top part of the circle. But since the measurements are the same, it really doesn't matter. So concentric circles, concentric Con means together, centric means center. So they share, they are circles that share the same center point. Okay, think bullseye, right? It would look kind of like this. These are concentric circles, okay? It's concentric circles. So why that's important is because it's gonna help us understand intercepted arcs and measures of central angles. So if we have um, an intercepted arc, an intercepted arc is an arc that is um, captured or intercepted. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. An intercepted arc is the arc that is captured inside the angle. And so you can see that this is an intercepted arc. Um, this is an intercepted arc. So all of those arcs are in between. If you were to lay your hands along the sides of the angles, they are, um, the intercepted arc is the part that is in between, okay? It's the piece of the arc um, inside the angle. We can use that same picture. And actually, then we can use the same picture. So the measure of a central angle, earlier we talked about a central angle like, say, BAC, right? BAC, that was a central angle. And how does a central angle? So basically what we want to see is, is if I had this circle and this angle is, say, 80 degrees, well, then it's 80 degrees of this little circle, it's 80 degrees of this big circle, and 80 degrees, and 80 degrees. And so proportionally, right, the, the circle gets bigger, but it's still 80 degrees out of 100, 360 degrees, right? It, regardless of how big the circle is, every circle is 360 degrees. And so the measure of the central angle is, if I wanted to know how big this angle is, the angle is equal to the measure of the arc. Okay, the central angle, the angle, and I like to write it shorthand like this, the angle is equal to the arc. That's how I write it, angle is equal to the arc, when the vertex is in the center of the circle. Because we're gonna talk about what happens when the vertex is on the circle, what happens when the vertex is inside the circle, what happens when the vertex is outside the circle, and all of those create different, um, different situations that you wanna pay attention to. So when it is in the center, the angle is equal to the arc. Okay, so this whole front page is all vocabulary. Let's look at this. Tangents. In a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to the radius. So that's going to be what's important. So we have our radius OP, and then we have our line AB. What this is saying is that AB is tangent only if those two are perpendicular at the point of tangency. 
Okay, that point of tangency is point P in this case. Um, that's where it touches. It's the one place that it touches the circle. So if AB is tangent to circle O, then OP is perpendicular to AB, or they are at opposite reciprocals. Remember that per um, perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals. So we can use this for number one, what's wrong with this picture? Well, when we first look at this, if AT is tangent at A and TB is tangent at B, then those two should be right angles. Well, what we have just created is this quadrilateral, right? We've got this quadrilateral and quadrilaterals should add to 360. Well, if you add up 90 and 90 and 36 and 147, you get that these angles add up to 360, 363 degrees, and it should be 360 degrees. And so what's wrong with it is that um, these angles don't add up to 360 degrees like they should because we know that these angles have to be right angles for those to be perpendicular or to, for those to be um, tangent at those points. So let's get some practice using our central angles and our arcs. Um, you want to pay attention to whether you're being asked for an angle or an arc. Later on, that's going to be important. Um, right now, it's not so much because the angle and the arc are equal, but later on, um, you will need to be able to distinguish whether you're talking about an angle or an arc. So pay attention to how what the um, problem looks like and how it's worded. Um, for instance, if you look at number four, I'm asking for the angle, but in number three, I'm asking for the arc. Okay, so just be sure you look for that, those symbols. So um, if we look at WX, now I like to start these problems um, pretty much just kind of going through and finding everything that I can find. So if I know that angle WAZ is 90 degrees, then I know that WAX is 90 degrees. Um, and then if, uh, because they form a linear pair. Um, but you can see then that 103, that 103, um, if that forms a straight line, then we know that this is um, 77. Okay, so that angle is 77. So and now we look at all of our arcs. Now remember, your angle is equal to the arc. So that means that this ZY, that part of the arc is 103 of the 360 degrees. This is 77 degrees of the 360 degrees. And this is 90 degrees. And this is 90 degrees. So I like to label all of that because now I have everything that I need to be able to solve this problem. So it says, how big is arc WX? So I look over here, WX. Arc WX is the same as the angle. The angle is 90 degrees, and so the arc would also be 90 degrees because the angle equals to the arc. XY, XY has that intercepted, that, um, that intercepted arc goes with this angle right here, this angle with this intercepted arc, and so it is also 77 degrees. WY, Okay, now be careful with WY, pay attention. So we're gonna go from W to Y. Notice that's two letters. So we're gonna go the short distance from W to Y. So you would add 90 plus 77. And 90 plus 77 is 167. Your clue would be if you got over 180 and you had a two letter name, then you know that you went the wrong direction. Um, which is what I actually I did the first time when I worked through the key is I went backwards. Okay, W, X, Z. Um, so W, X, Z, this is you go start at W, go through X, end at Z. So I went all the way around. So I'm going to add up all of those. Or you can also say, well, I did everything but 90 degrees. 360 minus 90 degrees is 270 degrees. Um, so Y, Z, W, start at Y, go towards Z, and then go towards W and end at W. So I need this arc right here. Um, and so you get 90 plus 103, which is 193 degrees over 180. That's Remember, that's what we want. We've got a major arc um, with three letters. Uh, we want X, Z, Y. So I start with X, I go to Z, and then I go to Y. So you kind of have to pay attention because you don't want to pass through Y first, okay? So that's everything but the 77 degrees. So, or I can add the 180 and the um, 103, and you get 283 degrees. Arc ZX, arc ZX, if you look at, um, 
where it is, arc Z, X. Now, it doesn't matter which direction I go. Notice, because that is a semicircle, and so that is 180 degrees. W, Z. W, Z is right here. Short way, W, Z, because it's two letters, 90 degrees. And W, Y, X. Start at W, go to Y, go to X. Again, that's all the way around the long way, and that's everything but 90 degrees, which is 270 degrees. Okay, so that's good practice um, knowing whether you're, you've got a, um, a major arc or a minor arc. Remember, a minor arc is two letters and it's less than 180, and a major arc is three letters and it's more than 180. Um, so we look at these problems to be able to find the measure of um, the arc or the central angle as indicated. So one of the things I think that's helpful to do is to go ahead and find all of the pieces. Um, and so you might want to mark on your computer screen or draw this picture out so that you can see. So C, F, D. I want to go from C to F to D, the long, <clears throat> the long way. Major arc, right? C to F to D. And so I need everything but that one piece. Well, I need that one piece. Well, um, remember, don't forget, it, the, one of the things that students often forget is semicircles. And so if you notice, this is a semicircle right here. Um, that straight line, that diameter that passes through, that diameter goes through. So you can say then 180 minus 30, 135 and get that this is 45 degrees. Also, don't forget vertical angles, linear pairs, all those things. This is 45 degrees, okay? And so then we can take um, 81 plus 45 and subtract that from 180 and get that this is 54 degrees. So CD is 54 degrees. I wanted everything except CD, so I would take 360 and subtract 54 and find out that CFD, arc CFD, is 306 degrees. Okay, same logic, same idea with angle S, P, Q. So angle S to P to Q, this is the angle that I want. So I want to know how big all of this is. Well, that means I need that U, T, and T, S. Well, those markings and those, um, these markings right here mean that they are congruent. So I would add 86, 60, and 154 and subtract that from 360, and I find out that these are 30 each. So if those are 30 each, then I would add 86 plus 30 plus 30 and get 146 degrees because the angle is equal to the arc. So if the arc is 80 plus 86 plus 60, then so is the angle. And number five, arc VW, VW. So we want this piece right here. So let's look at what we have and decide how to set it up. I have arc WS and I have arc UT. And I notice hmm, those are marked that they're congruent. So I would say, okay, well, then this is 5X plus 10 also. Label everything you know. Well, then what I notice is that um, this angle right here and this angle right here, those are vertical angles. We also know that the angle is equal to the arc. So I know that this is the same as whatever the angle is, which is 10x plus 20. So now I can say that the arcs are both equal to each other. Um, solve for x. Once you get it written down, solve, set it up, and then clean it up and solve it. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides, subtract 10 from both sides, 2x is equal to 22, or x is equal to 11. Now the question asks you to find wv. So um, once I go and find wv, I know that this is 65, this arc length is 65, um, and then this arc length is 130. Now you can go in and you can see uh, this is a diameter. There are several, but that's one of the diameters. And so you get 130, which means that WV is 50, because 180 minus 130 is 50. Okay, same thing you can do with number six. I want angle VST, so VST. I want to know how big this angle is right here. Well, using the markings, I know that the arc is 27x minus 3. I know that the angle and the arc are equal to each other when the vertex is in the center of the circle. And so you would add all of these up. So I'm going to combine my like terms, negative 27, negative 27, negative 37. 
that's negative 91x, and then negative 3, negative 3, and plus 2 is minus 4, and those equal um, 360 degrees because your full circle is 360. Add 4 to both sides, divide by negative 91, you get that x is equal to negative 4. Now I know some of you are weirding out because you get a negative answer, but if you go back and you check and you plug it in, if you do negative 27 times negative 4 minus 3, then negative 27 times negative 4 is positive 108. So you get positive 108 minus 3 is 105. And so I ended up with a positive answer. And so since I ended up with a positive answer, it works. Now, you, you do kind of want to pay attention if you get negative answers. Um, but go back and check it and make sure that it works. Don't just assume that it doesn't because it's negative. So this last question in circle K, we have K, H, G, or excuse me, H, K, G. So H, K, G is this angle right here. It's X plus 10. And I, K, J is this angle right here is 3X minus 22. Now I notice those are vertical angles. So I'm going to set those equal to each other. 3X minus 22 is equal to X plus 10. Subtract x from both sides, add 22 to both sides, and you get that 2x is equal to 32, or x is equal to 16. If x is 16, then this arc is 36. This arc and angle are 36. And then we can um, find the piece that's missing. So, um, 16, 16, oh, not 36, 26, I'm sorry. I made a mistake, 26. 16 plus 10 is 26. And then 48 minus 22 is 26. So that's 26. <clears throat> then you can remember everything that you know. You can start using your pieces. Um, that's a, a diameter, which is 180 degrees. It splits it into a semicircle. So you would add 74 and 26 and subtract that from 180, and you would find out that FJ, which is what you were asked for, FJ is 80 degrees. Okay, so ultimately in the end, here's the most important part, that um, you need to know for sure how to name minor arcs and major arcs so that you know what kind of answer you need to get. And then the other thing that you really need to know and recognize is that the central angle is equal to the portion of the circle that is intercepted, which is the arc. The angle is equal to the arc.